uh, edtech firms have been uh, uh, an edict has been passed for them to be not for profit a foreign curriculum has is coming into new kinds of uh, scrutiny uh, no tutoring on holidays now i think it is important for me to also uh, mention that some of these might turn out to be false alarms in, in, in the next few weeks but these are some scrutinized uh, uh, information that we have been tracking and uh, ownerships raising capital all of these has resulted in in quite a chaos especially in the in the investors minds and uh, the uh, impact has been uh, seen far and wide uh, including the the golden dragon index in new york it, that itself has seen a 30% drop uh, not to count the 40 50 60% drops in the market cap of edtech companies in china one uh, uh, hope chest uh, or or a very interesting optimistic interpretation of this is that you know i personally have always held that the global edtech capital over the next decade will find its foundation base and home in india pretty much similar to what we see in uh, uh, in in it it services and uh, this just could be one that event that we look back upon a decade from now and say that this one hastened the process and also was decisive in the outcome where indian edtech companies uh, have have gone and built out their next level of growth with their base in india but with with global markets uh, as the opportunity i'll move forward uh, as i said the physical aspect physical touch business has been zero on both sides on test prep side and also on the keystone side which translates into classes and events uh we ended up servicing about 18000 paid customers the postpone, postponement of exams continues to remain a big concern for us hopefully now the now the next big exam season begins only in the in in the in the december in the in the october november december and then onwards so hopefully that should be fine but uh, unless uh, it 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 happens uh, this will remain a concern corporate business keystone revenues uh, have been up and arjun will cover a little bit more and nikhil can step in to answer it in your q and a the the virtual events platform has seen a very good uh, pick up in various markets globally the institutional business has been a challenge because institutions which is basically universities that contribute significant part of our institutional revenues they have been challenged both in terms of their own uh, revenues etc as well as their uh, seasonality uh, which which comes from admissions outreach and so on so these have been a summary of our second wave impact observed over the last 3 uh, months i'll pause here and hand it over to you arjun uh, to pick it up from here thanks satya uh i'll i'll just uh, run you guys over the business updates as far as uh, our specific segments are concerned uh for us from a, a test prep business perspective as satya mentioned everything was digital over the last 3 uh, months like it has been for the better part of the last 18 months uh, from a comparative perspective though uh, the business teams have have done well uh, our gmv is up about 16% while our net billing has been up 17% in this quarter uh, we've also seen some positive signs in specific markets uh, especially our aptitude test prep segments where our mba billings our law billings and our after 12 which is the bba ipm segment billings have all shown uh, a positive sign compared uh, to the same quarter last year our business partners have also done we've kept a few centers open uh, as points of sale and uh, completely in line with with state government regulations and our business partner revenues are up 
18% from 14 CR to 17 CR in this quarter. Uh, we have heard rumblings, and I'm, I'm sure you as, as people who follow this space regularly have also seen that there are new, there is news of schools and uh, especially classes 9 to 12 opening up in select states over the next uh, month or so. We've, we've seen news of that emerging out of uh, Haryana, UP, uh, Andhra and other select markets. So there, there is a chance that we would see some sort of return to schools and to institutions uh, starting from August. But as Satya mentioned previously, Diwali and post-Diwali looks like uh, you know a better time period to keep in mind in terms of a return to some semblance of normalcy. Of course, contingent upon how the third wave turns out. As far as our enterprise business is concerned, uh, we've uh, we've done a business of about 18 crores. Uh, this uh, is up from a, a, about 16 crores in the same quarter last year. And our EBITDA margin for our Keystone India business is up from uh, 3% to, to 9%. So uh, the digital wave, as Satya mentioned, has, has uh, had a very positive impact on our enterprise corporate business as well. Uh, Specifically, with regards to our virtual events business, uh, we we had an order book of about uh, one million USD in uh, in the last financial year. After we set this product up and took it to market, uh, we already we've had a great start to this uh, financial year. We uh, in in Q1 we've we've got an order book of about uh, uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand USD. So we're well on track towards uh, doing significantly uh, better than we did last year and, and giving the enterprise business wings uh, to, to chart its own growth curve. Uh, international markets especially will play a key role in terms of driving this growth. And uh, especially out of our business, which is based out of Singapore, Amazon, Cisco, Dell remain critical clients. And even in the US, uh, you know, where... Uh, the COVID wave has moved in a slightly different direction as compared to India. There are talks of some return to a hybrid model, which would help our events business accelerate a little bit in terms of a return to normalcy, where there could be uh, some sort of a return to uh, a mix of physical and virtual events in, in, the, in the quarters ahead. Uh, our institutional business, as Satya mentioned, has been uh, impacted by the significant delay in the examination cycle, which has obviously affected the admit admission cycle. And, uh, you know, that is something that has effectively pushed everything back by at least a quarter. Uh, universe central universities like Delhi University, Mumbai University are all currently still doing their admissions for first year. And so that also has an impact on the private university business. From our and uh, we did our first uh, uh, undergraduate uh, summit for students uh, in this quarter for the year. Uh, we had an attendance of about a three about three thousand students took part in this uh, event. And from our side, we're doing a lot to expand our digital inventory uh, in the enterprise institutional domain, which we believe will have a positive impact on our margins going forward. Uh, the publishing business is uh, also starting to show signs of life. Uh, you'll, you'll remember from our, our presentations of last year, COVID had hit this business particularly badly with a lot of retailers, uh, distributors, wholesalers, everyone pretty much shut. And also with uh, transport being largely limited to its essential services, uh, the books services and the publishing businesses across uh, India and across a lot of the world were affected. Uh, we've done a fantastic job at our end in terms of shifting our focus towards the online and institutional space, which is now 90% of our business. And uh, we've made a concerted effort to, to ensure that uh, our focus in this business is, is uh, to leverage our existing stock and to focus on a POD model where we only print new stock where, where someone is paying for it upfront and with virtually no inventory. 
uh, I'll move forward by just giving you uh, a demonstration of some exciting work we're doing in the uh, enterprise space. Uh, Bosmos is is something that uh, Keystone has produced. Uh, it is it is still very much at at a very early stage, and uh, it it has three particular uh, elements in it. There's a this includes a DIY uh, events business, which is uh, about uh, a few months still away from from going out to the marketplace. But we're doing a pilot of this with some select customers. We have a webinar business of the same as well. And what I will do today is I'll give you a quick demonstration of our Vosmos virtual store uh, that we have created for Dell in uh, in collaboration with Reddington. And uh, I'll, I'll just move out of the PPT for a quick second and, and uh, do a screen share of, of what a, a virtual store looks like uh, that our Keystone team has prepared. This is, this is what it looks like if you walk into one of our, our Keystone virtual stores. I'll, I'll just give you a 360 view of the same. This is if I enter the lobby and I have these different products available of Dell that I can take a look at. We have their laptops, their servers, and so on. I'll just enter into the laptop space and and give you a quick overview of what it looks like. You can you can take a look at the different laptops available, uh, watch a video which will uh, give you a 3D representation of the same. And you can click on it and and uh, and actually purchase the product as well. So just to give you a, a bit of a, a demonstration into what uh, a superstore looks like. On, on a virtual, uh, at a virtual level today. I'll also circulate the link of this uh, and make it available for those of you who want to spend a little bit more time looking at it offline. Uh, going back to the PPT, so the virtual store concept is now live. Uh, we're looking at rolling this out uh, as part of our Keystone Enterprise business uh, to different markets uh, over the coming months. And as I shared previously, the DIY events and the webinar business is, is still under a pilot testing and we were looking to roll that out in a couple of quarters down the line. Moving ahead. Uh, this is just a, a, a quick view of, you know, some of the events that we've been doing in Keystone. Uh, I spoke to you about how our international business is absolutely crucial going forward. And uh, this was an event we did virtually uh, for Middle East banks uh, in, uh, in April. This is an event that we did with Microsoft. Uh, just to give you a quick overview of some of the great work we've been doing at Keystone over the last few months. I'll move into the financials now. Uh, you would have seen some of these if you had gone through our standalone and consolidated results that were posted last night our operating revenue is is up ten uh, percent uh, on a year on year basis from forty seven to to fifty two and uh, our uh, adjusted EBITDA is is uh, is more or less flat uh, our operating EBITDA is up from uh, 3.8 to 6.3, and I'll I'll walk you through that in in my next slide. Our adjusted PAT is also up 81 percent from six, from 1.6 CR to 3 CR uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, moving forward, I as I was sharing just recently, uh, our operating EBITDA is up from 3.8 crores to 6.2 crores. That's about 64 percent. 
the difference between the operating EBITDA and, and the EBITDA is uh, one-time income that would have hit our other income on account of uh, some interest uh, from tax refunds and some liabilities that were written back. So from a, if I were to just look at it from a business perspective, our revenues are up uh, almost five crores, which is 10%, and our EBITDA is up uh, by 64%. EBITDA margins too are up from 8 to 12%. Moving forward, our cash position is fairly similar to where we were in March. Uh, I had shared with you our net cash in March was 30.4. We're at uh, 30.5. Uh, so uh, despite COVID, uh, you know, we're, we're managing to maintain uh, healthy cash levels and, and we're at a fairly similar stage as compared to where we were three months back. Uh, one key thing that you might wish to note here is our long-term debt continues to reduce down from 5.7 in, in the last quarter to 4.6 crores in this quarter. Uh, moving forward, I'll just run you through some of the corporate updates and then I'll also invite Satya to uh, join me and in closing the session. Uh, one of the key things that we had, that was approved yesterday in our uh, in our board meeting was the stocks uh, our, the new face value of our shares will be 5 rupees and uh, obviously the reason we're doing this is to increase liquidity and to invite higher participation from retail shareholders. On some of the other key points from a corporate perspective, uh, some of you would remember that our merger of uh, five entities into the parent entity uh, has been uh, was something that we filed a couple of years ago and because of COVID had been delayed. In fact, we hadn't had uh, our NCLT second hearing meeting uh, had been postponed for the better part of the last year on account of COVID. I'm happy to share that that meeting finally took place on 30th July and uh, the next meeting date, which is for the final hearing, will be held in October uh, once the tax authorities file their report. Uh, Faridabad land sale is in progress. We hope to conclude it in this month. Uh, Satya, would you like to come in for the last three points? The fundraise sure. update sure. and yeah. Okay, on the on the fundraise um, uh, and 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 all these three points are work works and or projects in progress. And as all of us know, unless these are done, accomplished, and uh, the ink dries up on paper and cash hits the bank. It is it's it's a project in progress. I would like to place that caveat right up front. But in the spirit of uh, keeping you updated from uh, one call to the next quarter, I'm, I'll cover these briefly. On the fundraise part, uh, Keystone fundraise unfortunately uh, had has to be had to be deferred by about sixty days because uh, Piyush, who's the president and CEO of our enterprise business, he himself was down for almost uh, six and a half, seven weeks, hospitalized for long. So in the middle of the tracks, we had to stop. And that has just got, got resumed about uh, 10 days ago. On the CL Educate side, there are four uh, sincere, serious uh, conversations uh, in progress. Those are at the stage of uh, some of some presentations, con, con sheets, and so on. So we'll keep you updated as we progress there. And uh, the reason why that was uh, uh, becoming one of the options uh, in some ways can be connected to the next bullet. As you know, as you are aware, one of the things that we are trying to do over the next 24 months is to be able to grow from leadership in three business segments, which is MBA law and IPM, and add uh, UPSC to it. And in that context, uh, we at, at the board level have been inclined to looking at it uh, more as a buy instead of a build. So there is some serious conversation that's happening that's at the term sheet stage, which could be, uh, uh, if, if it translates into a done project, uh, we will fund it through a mix of uh, accruals plus 
maybe a little bit of debt, maybe private equity, the money that we raise. Uh, but what it would do if it is successful is to get us from the current position in UPSC and catapult us into the top three. And that could be very, very interesting and exciting because that's a very large segment of government jobs. And UPSC sits right at the apex of a very, very massive uh, government uh, sector job opportunity with over 1.3 crore aspirants. And UPSC aspirants alone are about 15 lakhs. And when you compare it with a MBA aspirants, that's almost uh, five to seven times the number of aspirants who take MBA exam. Uh, the last bullet, uh, Arjun, you'll have to move the slide, the this, the uh, slide a little bit. I'm uh, I'm blinded by the. Is it uh, is it, uh, Arjun? Perhaps you are on on mute. Uh, the 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 last bullet uh, is about uh, an update on 361 degree mines uh, which is one of uh, investi one of the investing companies of career launcher they are in the skills education space based out of chennai run by seasoned entrepreneurs and uh, uh, we uh, hold some strategic stake in them and the update uh, briefly that i wanted to give you was that in their journey they are uh, raising some money and uh, what it does is it translates some of the CL's earlier investments into equity uh, because it was a CCPS option. And uh, the fund that they are raising uh, is at about 105, 106 crore pre-money and they're raising just under a million. And uh, that would translate into a significant uptick for the CL investment in 361 degree mines. Uh, the, the, the more interesting thing is that they're doing very very exciting, very interesting work, and it might have some strategic uh, 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 implications as the future unfolds. As of now, this again is just an update, as and when each of these translate into specific uh, uh, events or milestones, you will find these updated on the investor zone uh, for you to take a look at. I'll pause. Thanks, Satya. Uh, we'll now throw the uh, floor open to any questions. Uh, because I had to take this slide down for a few seconds, I'm just putting it back out online. And then after a couple of minutes, I'll move on to the thank you slide, which has our email addresses, where you can write back into us if you have any questions. Arjun, you want to pick up? There are a couple, there are a couple of questions uh, here in the in, in the chat box uh, from uh, uh, Aniket, and then I can see another hand going up too. Yeah, I'll I'll just take a look at them. Thanks. Is the audio better now? I, there was a there was a uh, message from somebody saying is the uh, audio is slightly low. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear, Satya. I'll, I'll start. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. So I'll start by sharing Aniket's first question. Uh, he's asking about the segment-wise revenue contribution and uh, also from uh, the test prep business. Uh, I'll just for a second uh, stop sharing my screen. And uh, so Aniket, some some of the, some of the segment wise shares we we as uh, we do share at a summary level, but some more we we ho we hold them back for obvious reasons of competitive information. Uh, you know, our, our business has uh, is, is is it still doesn't have the ORG mark kind of uh, data publishing. So from a from a competitive uh, information uh, security point of view, some granular details we refrain from uh, sharing. But but broad uh, broad contours can be shared by Arjun and even put up on the on the website uh, once it is uh, audited and approved by the appropriate uh, senior guys. Thanks, Satya. Just to also share that uh, Anikit, if you look at our uh, consolidated results page, it has the five segments uh, shared in that: the partner, digital, consumer, publishing, 
enterprise corporate, which is predominantly the Keystone business, the enterprise institutional and others. So you'll get the specific information that you were desiring. Uh, if you take a look at that page, I'll just put it on the screen so that the same becomes available for you to check out later on. I'll move on to the next question in the meantime. On the fundraise part, I'll, I'll take this, Arjun. Uh, on the fundraise part, uh, Keystone, we could assume that it quite literally started off uh, 10 days ago. So as I mentioned in the last call, uh, assume that it's a it's a 90 day journey. So another 80 days for Keystone. Uh, and, and all of us are seasoned enough uh, in this that it takes anywhere between three to six months. Uh, on the CL side, uh, I think the, uh, the the place where we may have to begin to have internal confabulations, discussions to say a yes or a no and the term sheet based discussions, that might uh, happen by the before or by the time we get to the first week of September in my view, next 30, 40 days. Uh, CL, we should be in a position to either say yes and uh, and and pick up an investment or say a no and and move on. And as you know, I want it to be reasonably clear that uh, our fundraising is for very important strategic reasons uh, to fuel growth, to use it to fund our uh, uh, acquisitions or access acceleration, brand building, those are the kind of uh, three important uh, application of funds that we see for the funds that we are raising. And uh, we will uh, be very mindful of the value that it attributes to the overall business uh, when we engage with, uh, with uh, when, when, the, when the board subcommittee uh, engages with the potential investors. I hope I'm, I'm clear on that. Arjun, this question uh, you might want to take, how much money yeah, is uh, Satya, uh, there, as you rightly said, there's a question on the update on our legal matter with BNS yes. strategy services. Yes. Uh, I'd just like to share that uh, this matter is currently sub judice and uh, the arbitration proceedings is, are in progress. Uh, there is a, a recoverable uh, from BNS uh, into CLIP, uh, which is in excess of four crores. And uh, there is also a, a transaction portion to be completed as part of our original term sheet, uh, all of which is currently in progress. And we'll update you on the same uh, as and when we can. As I mentioned, the matter is currently sub this, So I will uh, limit myself to sharing just that for the time being. Arjun, I saw uh, Krishna Kumar raise his hand. Maybe you would want to check. Uh, uh, if, if there is, if that has been typed and sent, or uh, am I missing it, or or uh, you want to? Uh, I request. Yeah. Hi, uh, yeah. Hi, Arjun. Hi, Satya. Congrats on a set of improved performance across the board. Uh, wish you better times ahead. Uh, my question, uh, you know, is first one: uh, say sixty-one degrees. Uh, uh, could you spend a minute uh, talking us, uh, walking us through the business there and? Uh, uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, potential that we see there uh, in terms of opportunities? Uh, if you can throw some light. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, KK. Thanks for uh, joining. You know, broadly, they're doing two businesses. And, and, and uh, but before that, the overarching uh, strength of it is that uh, they do uh, the uh, entirely cloud-based and a scalable curriculum. And the two kinds of businesses that they do are, uh, one is about getting your mainstream university degree. Uh, for example, if you're an Anamalai uh, university student, you can enroll with Anamalai, but the learnings, etc., for your BCom, BA, etc., you would do it on the 361 degree Minds platform. So that's one part of their business. The other part of their business is are these skill-based programs that enhance your employability. You, you get from a good job to a better job. And both of these are uh, delivered online. They do have a uh, little bit of a uh, contribution coming from partners who act as reseller partners. And uh, their programs and products and segments are extremely complementary to where CL focuses. Uh, so 
if it picks up well and uh, and if there are some synergies in in future uh, it it could be a good good candidate for cl and 361 dm to engage at a strategic level however at this point in time it just might be premature we find the team uh, very competent and that was what led us to invest a small amount of money uh, about 3 or 4 years ago i hope that answers your question uh, kk additionally arjun uh, what i would uh, su suggest is see if we can get a, a brief summary from p61 dm management uh, a, a one one and a half page document maybe plus a ppt and we could put it up on the investor zone as a response to this query from uh, investors sounds good we'll we'll get it done uh, uh kk uh, post this investment uh, by them we would hold uh, arjun could you please unmute uh, kk yes sure i i, I see him asking a question yeah, thanks good good uh, satya sir yeah I, i i i think post this we would be holding anywhere between maybe 12 to 14% the uh, they are they are still at the term sheet negotiation etc stage that's what we would hold uh, of this uh, and uh, the the pre money investment uh, is is at 106 crores and they are raising just a little less than a million dollars in this phase now Arjun, there were some other hands also going up. Yes, there's a hand raised from Sandeep Talwar. Okay. Uh, Sandeep, I've given you speaking rights. No, my question was about the amount we held. I think uh, Satya answered that. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, Sandeep. Thanks, thanks, Sandeep. right so there if there are no more questions uh, there is one from there is one from muttu kumar uh, arjun I'll, i'll pick it up broadly uh, uh, muttu you know when uh, when when the when the keystone digital businesses uh, in in its new avatar it is picking up uh, and we are seeing early signs of it the the ebitda margins uh, will improve and hopefully it will improve uh, very visibly in in two to four quarters Uh, that's one area i see uh, margins improving and with, within test prep if we are able to graduate to doing the premium programs uh, in upsc along with our what uh, what what is our uh, core cash cow which is mba law and ipm uh, when those volumes grow i think that also will lead to ebitda margins uh, growing on the on the test prep side one particular point that i would like to mention in continue in continuation with that ebitda uh, question see the uh, the profitability becoming non linear on the consumer side do it is equally applicable on the so under 6 months hopefully they will bear fruit over the next two or three quarters one is you know this onlineization of learnings is yielding to a very changed uh, pedagogical uh, timetable as far as uh, our interaction with students are concerned earlier we used to have small batch sizes they would come three to four times a week that is now that has already now made way to large batches which are all delivered simultaneously wherein a single faculty is of handling 30 or 40 students he is now handling 300 to 400 students because it's a, it's a live online broadcast and when that kind of picks up and this already happened a little bit during the covid era the productivity per resource per fixed resource that you do that's altering significantly number 2 when in the new areas that we are entering when we when we are able to graduate to the 
a premium program. So, you know, for example, a UPSC program is a one lakh rupee program, premium one. Uh, similarly, an an IPM two year program or a CUCET two year program. These are all premium programs that always end up delivering non-linear profits once you cross a threshold and you are able to build leadership there. I'm looking at these two enabling our uh, uh, profitability growth as we move two to four quarters from now. Yeah, Arjun, over to you. If there is, if there is no more, we could. Uh... Uh, that's a late question coming in, I think, Sapya. Oh, no, uh, so thanks from Muthu Kumar. You're welcome, Muthu, and it's been our pleasure uh, to host all of you this evening. Uh, we'll be back with our ATM on uh, 31st August. We would invite all shareholders to join us again for that. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Arjun. Recording stopped.